Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Hero Showcase. And today, I have the pleasure of showing you guys my personal favorite hero in the entire roster, and that is going to be Sigiri. Sigiri gives you the Machine Assassin class, and in my mind, this is probably one of the coolest concepts that you could ever give to any class in any RPG ever. You got dual axes, which I love, and you have the ability to debuff your opponents, and on top of that, the ability to do bonus damage on targets that are inflicted with the debuffs that you apply on them. However, due to the way that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 works, there are plenty of resistance checks. Most of the unique monsters, most of the super bosses, actually all of the super bosses and all the unique monsters, and I'm pretty sure even the elites, all have really hefty defenses and resistances against debuffs. This is all a consequence of how Xenoblade Chronicles 3's mechanics works. The way that debuffs work, even in the context of chain attacks, they'll disappear after a round or two, making it a very inconsistent form of damage. And the thing is, too, is that if you look at the master skills that they pass on to other characters, the Cursed Edge, this sounds really, really awesome, 70% damage for attacking a debuffed enemy, but again, because of how inconsistent that debuff buffs are, using them in a chain attack, they tend to disappear before you can even enjoy the effects, and there are plenty of other master skills or class skills that will uh, be more beneficial to your party members in order to do as much damage as possible. And the same thing goes for the anti-erosion system, you get a bunch of debuffs, but because the signifer exists, you can effectively get the exact same result of applying debuffs on your enemy by buffing your own party. And then when you buff your own party, it's so much more reliable because the party members don't resist the buffs that you apply to them, whereas the bosses that you're fighting will resist practically all of the buffs of the debuffs that you're giving to them. It is kind of unfortunate because this is a really, really cool kind of class to work with. It is kind of strange because Sigiri to recruit her requires a lot of preparation. There is a lot of side quests that you have to do and she only becomes available in the late game. As most of the bosses that you'll be fighting in the late game or even the post game will be highly resistant to debuffs. So it does make her kind of useless or at least it makes the class useless. Sagiri herself though is actually quite useful in the context of chain attacks despite the fact that I did mention that debuffs disappear after return and the fact that debuffs are very inconsistent. But the thing that makes Sagiri shine is the abilities that she brings to the table with the chain attacks, and that is the ability to re reduce the resistance of ether and physical on the enemy that you're fighting against after you finish her chain order, and of course her innate ability that whenever she finishes a... Um, she goes over the 99% cap of the uh, technical points, or the TP, she ends up increasing that by 50%, which is going to be consistent 200% all across the board to get that amazing score, which will then increase the multiplier of the damage that you do inside of the chain attack. This is also very, very apparent when you play the game on hard mode, where hard mode very significantly reduces the amount of damage that you do in chain attacks, but Sigiri is able to make up the difference effortlessly. And that's why I like her so much. So. Part of the reason why I don't want to really make this the Machine Assassin class showcase is because, let's face it, unless a DLC comes along where they can have an accessory or ability or something that reduces the debuff resistance of all bosses significantly, I don't really see this kit seeing much use outside of fighting regular enemies. But even then, there are plenty of classes, particularly attacker classes, that can do the job just fine without all that setup. They can really just perform well straight out of the box, whereas the Machine Assassin does require a little bit of prep, a little bit of RNG, and by the time that's done, you have eight characters or seven characters in your party that will probably kill the enemy anyways, especially if you're playing in post-game with maxed out gems. It's not all bad news, like I said, Sagiri during chain attacks is extremely good. So currently I'm going to show you guys the accessories I've given to her. Uh, you can change the accessories after you beat the game. So the first one I want to point out is the Veneris Rings. This is part of the Legacy of the Seven. And normally this isn't a particularly useful accessory to have. Increasing the TP isn't that great because it's so short term. But the thing about Sagiri is that you want to have as many points as possible for that first turn to guarantee 150% or higher in the overall TP count. 
The reason why you want to do that is that you want to be able to bring back two characters for the next round. When you have more characters to work with, you'll be able to consistently plan out your turns as you do the chain attack and therefore plan out as much damage as possible before the chain attack ends. I've also given her the silver belt. Pretty much anything that boosts her attack by uh, attack percentage is something you want to have on most party members, particularly attackers. And then there's going to be the fiber wraps to give her more damage when she's fighting against launched enemies. Again, this is a staple. You do so much damage when fighting against launched enemies, adding 110% is crazy good, and you should pretty much have it on every attacker in your party. When it comes to the rest of the party that I have here, uh, they're going to be essentially reaping the benefits of Sagiri's uh, pr productivity of TP inside of the chain attacks. So I'm going to be looking at Senna. She's a soul hacker. I've given her the uh, Kung Fu fits just so I can kind of play around with the whole martial arts aspect of it. And uh, I've given her the Lune Rings. Lune Rings increases the damage of fusion arts. This is another legacy of the seven. Whenever you do a chain attack, everything is a fusion art. So of course, increasing the damage by 100% is always good. The fiber wraps, you already know why. Just more damage against launched enemies, and then the ceramic belt to increase the attack power. I also have two signifers in my team. It's a pretty standard build. I wanted to give them gems that increase their buff power or buff potential. Uh, for Tyon, I'm going to be using him as a lead. I'll be playing as him for the majority of this fight until I eventually have to switch over to Lance, which I'll talk about. I've given her the um, I've given him the fraternal badge, the crystal earrings, and the gust bracelets. Uh, fraternal badge is self-explanatory. Basically, all you got to do is whenever someone that is a healer or attacker is being targeted, your cooldowns will go uh, fill up really, really quickly. And the this also stacks with the protector's pride, which you can get from the Let's see, what you can get from the Guardian, uh, from, what's his name? The Guardian Commander skill from Zeon's class, and you're going to want to have this on both of your signifers at all times, because if ever things go south and someone else is being targeted, you can get your buffs up really, really fast, increase your survivability right off the bat. Uh, I could go over the other master skills too. Strengthening Gambit, Capable Hands, pretty standard stuff. I mean, Capable Hands just gives us the Cry of Faith immediately, and the Strengthening Gambit, of course, increasing the duration of our buffs. Uh, also, uh, going back to the accessories, I've given him the Crystal Earrings, just so that the more I cast the buffs, the sooner I can build up the Chain Attack. The sooner I can build up a Chain Attack more reliably, the quicker I can close out a battle. And then I have the Gust Bracelet on both of these characters, no, on just this character, actually, where all of his Master Skills will be available immediately. This is really, really important, because all of the Master Arts that I have are Advanced Cooldown. This is just the same effect as Heal Harmony. Shadow Eye to give tie on the attack buff, which he'll eventually pass on to everyone using Resonant Flag, and then Cross Impact, which used in combination with Resonant Flag, will give power charge to the entire party, thus increasing their damage further. For Lance, I have taken away the Gust Bracelet and instead given him the Break Brooch, since I'll not be playing as him. I've given him the Break Brooch because over on his Master Arts, I've given him Flashback, which is a Break, Shield Bash, which is a Topple, and Soaring Tempest, which is a Launch. We want to go for a Launch. He is the only one that has... Listen, that's not true. I think Mio has a Launch and Senna also has a Break, but for the most part, I'll be relying on Lance to initiate it. But if all else fails, I also have Noah in reserve when he reaches interlink level 3, I could also prompt him to go for breaks as well. That's pretty much all I really need to say. I have the pretty standard stuff. I got a dodge tank for Mio, because that's what she's really, really good at. And I have two full metal jaguars with the typical setup of having attack power for the accessories, fiber wraps for the launch damage bonus, and the platinum cubes, which give them more damage for their uh, fusion arts, which is going to be used during the chain attacks. That's all I can really say, though. Sagiri, in and of herself, she can't really be the focal point of our strategy, but she's extremely, extremely useful in the context of doing chain attacks. Like I mentioned before, if you play the hard the game on hard mode like I do, you're going to notice that a lot of the um, damage bonuses that you get from a chain attack will be significantly reduced and it'll accumulate a lot slower. But if you play the game on normal or even easy mode, the notice you're going to notice a really huge difference in how much damage that you can put out with Sagiri just because of how crazy some of her damage potential can get with all those multipliers and all that percentage. You can get as high as like 700% if you use her at the end. It's not optimal to do that, but yeah, just the fact that you can reach that high is pretty, pretty good. 
So I think that's pretty much all I can say. I really like Sagiri in and of herself as being an ex almost like an accessory for a chain attack. She's not a particularly powerful unit, but that's kind of the thing about Xenoblade 3. Everyone works as a team, everyone uh, pitches in, all these people can work together to overcome the odds, and that's what we're going to see in today's demonstration. So I'll see you guys there. Alright, so we're going to be fighting against Obliterator Centario over in the Agnes Castle Levness Workyard. This is one of the highest level unique short of fighting against the super boss, and of course we're going to be fighting him on hard mode. Just to give him some more HP so that you guys can kind of get a better understanding of how the damage can really make a difference when you're fighting in a chain attack with Sagiri in your party. I'm going to be leading things off with Tyon as well, and yeah, here we go. Everyone is ready. And every time a single battle begins, I always want to start things off with a Cry of Faith. And then go through all my fusion arts since I have a Gust Bracelet. I don't think I'll need to worry about building up Interlink with Tyon. The only person that will really rely on for Interlink is going to be Lance and Noah. Simply because Lance also has the ability to do launches from the Interlink as well if he reaches level 3. But yeah, playing as a Signifer, like as long as you're pressing buttons, you're going to do well. It's a really, really powerful class, and as long as you're getting all of your cooldowns, the moment they become available, you're going to build up the Cry of Faith really quickly, especially if the tank isn't unable to hold aggro, because that Fraternal Badge and Defender's Pride is going to, or Protector's Pride is going to kick in. Uh, before you do Resident Flag, it's always a good idea to wait for Cross Impact to be available too, so that you can make sure everyone can benefit from the damage. But yeah, like this this is such a great class that uh, the Machine Assassin, I was kind of hoping that it would be the equivalent of that, uh, but from an offensive perspective. Okay, so we have a full chain attack ready. I'm going to switch over to Lens and see if he can uh, go for a break. Noah currently isn't at level 3 interlink, but that's okay. I'll wait for the Soaring Tempest to be available. Okay, now that Noah's at level 3, I'll wait for it. The good thing about having Lance be a, a Signifer is that you can actually, if you fail any of your breaks, if you fail any of your breaks, you can just go ahead and do Signifer things, buff up your party, keep everyone alive. Okay, so we're going to slowly walk you through this. Uh, since we're playing on hard mode, the damage percent is starting at 125, and it won't necessarily go higher than that, uh, or go much, much higher than that like you're probably used to. We won't probably hit the quadruple digits. I'm going to go ahead and start things with uh, Noah's Order, because we'll bypass the fences. And starting off with Noah, I'm going to use the Fatal Barrage and No Love Lost. This is going to give us a fair amount of points on this launched enemy. And of course, he has the Fiber Wrap, so we're going to get even more damage. And of course, because he's an attacker, he gets a 125% multiplier. And then we can switch over to Sigiri, the star of our show here. Multiplies TP by 150% when the hero completes the order, and that's exactly what we intend to do, and that's why I put on the accessory that increases her TP to make that a reality. So as we can see, 150%, that is going to give us a lot. We went over 150%, meaning that we're going to get two characters back. And one of them will def- and because we're getting two characters back, we guarantee that Sagiri is coming back. Theoretically, you can do this with only one character coming back if you get less than 140% or less than 150%, but you don't want to take that risk. It's highly likely it'll end up being Noah, so uh, don't rely on that. Okay, so we have Nyuni, she's our other main attacker. She's another full Metal Jaguar, so we'll get her next. And what's going to happen here is I'm going to start things off with Yuni. I also have Fatal Barrage and No Love Lost, so I'm going to use that. Slowly whittle down the HP, not a problem. And then we have Tyon with the Cross Impact Resonant Flag, so I'm going to pass the Resonant Flag... Um, oh, sorry, Resonant Flag is going to pass the Cross Impact effect, which is Power Charge, to the entire party. And as you can see, even with the buffs and the debuffs, if ever we inflect a debuff onto the boss, as indicated by any red icons beneath the HP bar, 
uh, it'll disappear after return, so that's, again, part of the problem with the Machine Assassin, is that by virtue of this being Xenoblade 3, you can't really rely on that as a source of damage, unless you try to go for a sustained gameplay with no chain attacks, which is very, very impractical when you try playing this on post-game strategies, especially against super bosses. Alright, so we're already at 99% because of the healers, that can't go over. And we have a hefty 267%. Yeah, and you're hitting all of those numbers. It's almost like the ether cannons, hitting so many numbers really, really fast. Okay, so we're in luck. Normally, this would have to be the last turn, but now we can use our hero, and this won't consume a turn or rounds inside of the chain attack, and we definitely want to have her because of the effect, reducing the enemy physical and ether defense by 30% during the chain attack. My goodness, she's so cute, isn't she? The voice actor does such a great job. Just do some Mio, a little bit of scratch damage. You can use up to two characters before you can use Sagiri. And finish it off with Sagiri. Also, I'm using the... just so you guys know, you can use pretty much any attack, but I personally like to use the attack that does more damage for a side attack, since the bonus gives more TP. Okay. Now, again, uh, for those of you guys that are unfamiliar, we can choose between... Well, actually, we have no choice. We have no choice but to use Tyon, because Noah and Yuni, they of course have the Ouroboros pair, and only uh, only uh, Tyon can match for that one. So, uh, if Mio was here, we could also pick Mio to match up with Noah, but since we don't have that, we only have Tyon. And he's a pretty good one, too, because once we finish the order, he will reduce the physical defense by 50 percentage points, which is incredibly important for what's going to happen with Senna once we finish it. And start things off with a power charge. And you know what? Because this is going to be the last turn before we bring everyone back with the Ouroboros. Go for Lance as well. And then we're gonna have you. Will, let's have give Uni this. Yeah, now we're hitting well into the hundred thousands at this point. Even on hard mode, where they significantly reduce the damage of the chain attack, Sigiri makes up the difference. Okay, so we actually see that we have a debuff inflicted. So again, go over to Tyon. And see, it, and see that red icon? It disappeared. So, like, we, we only had one chance to use it and it did not work, which is, again, the detriment of the Machine Assassin class. The debuffs barely last. But we got the buffs, and we got ourselves the, the Power Charge, and we got Senna. Senna has the Sumo Press and the Murder Knuckle, and the best part about this is that we're fighting against a launched enemy, and the smash damage in this game is out of this world, so we're going to have this high damage multiplier of 557% applied to smash. So everybody, hold your breath, make a wish, hope for a crit. Ooh, not quite a quit. Ah, I sp uh, sorry, I pronounced that wrong. Not quite a crit. But, uh, I think that was like in the 8 million mark, I have to replay that. But that is more than enough to close out a match against most of the enemies in this game, which is great. So, yeah, that's one of the things, though. Taking advantage of Sagiri and her ability to have really, really high multipliers is a lot of fun to work with. It's something that I've been playing around with a lot myself. A respectable 13 million, not bad. Not bad at all. So, yeah, like I was saying, though, like, the nice thing about Sagiri is that despite the fact that her kit is a bit lacking and that there are some issues with how, you know, it's just by virtue of Xenoblade 3 being what it is, there are going to be some issues, especially with how, like, debuffs work as, like, very, very, they're very ephemeral. They barely last, and they're e very difficult to apply in the first place, so it's such hard work for very, very little of a result. That being said, though, Sagiri in and of herself, she does have those cool gimmicks within the context of chain attacks, and it's probably the best way to use her specifically. 
As for the class itself, unless the DLC comes out where they have something like um, an accessory or something that just lowers the abilities or lowers the debuff resistance of the bosses in this game because they are completely unusable in most scenarios or not unusable. I think you could, but it's highly impractical at this point, um, at this point in the game. So hopefully this is just an oversight on the behalf of the developers that maybe they were afraid that the ability to debuff enemies and do bonus damage on debuffs, they were probably afraid that it was going to be too powerful. It wasn't. Smashes are insanely powerful, but not so with the debuffs. So maybe the developers will have a look at it again. Maybe they won't. As it is, the Machine Assassin is just a curiosity. A really cool looking class. And Sigiri, uh, like I said, one of, the, one of my favorite characters. No, not even one of my absolute favorite character in the entire hero roster, both in terms of design, in terms of how her quest line is, acquiring her was such an adventure that I'll never forget, and her voice actor did such a great job with portraying this character that is uh, not quite Poppy, not quite Eggle, somewhere in the middle. And that's what I love about her, and that's what I appreciate about her as well. So guys, thank you very, very much on watching this very unorthodox hero class showcase. It's more of a hero showcase. We want to focus more on Sagir because she brings so much to the table. Uh, but yeah, she is really, really fun. If you guys are still farming or you want to uh, farm experience, she's a really good idea, especially if you guys play on normal mode. Her damage really goes a long way if you want to go for those overkill bonuses. She's maybe even the best one, I'm not sure. We'll have to experiment some more. Uh, she potentially has more damage output in chain attacks by increasing that damage uh, bonus than Ashera, who gives that guaranteed 200%, which is really really saying something. So again, thank you very, very much for dropping by. I hope you guys enjoy experimenting with more of the builds. I hope you guys um, have the best of luck when you are playing around with all these characters as you build your characters in between now and whatever is waiting for us in the coming years. But until then, I will see you guys next time. Take care, everyone. Yo, I'm hungry! Okay. <laughs>